Gentlemen, it's MKO Pugilism Boxing Channel. All things boxing. 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 All That's time. right, man. And we're back here again. And uh, this time we're going to talk about a fight that took place on uh, the undercard of the um, the Demetrius Andrade versus um, Luke Keeler card. You also have two YouTube boxes on there. And this fight was um, one of the three world title fights that was um, on the card. And these are guys that um, I don't know a load of information about, but uh, it was uh, him <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it was an um, entertaining fight, and this was um, the smaller guys. This was um, a fight between Daniel Roman, who um, I've not seen that much of, I've seen a few of his fights, versus a guy whose name is very hard to pronounce, but we'll try it. It's Murad John Akmal Akmadaliev. Yeah, so Murajan Akhmadaliev, right? And um, he's from Uzbekistan. Now the records of the fighters going in were 27 wins, 3 losses, 1 draw with 10 KOs. That was for Daniel Roman. And um, then you had uh, 7 wins, no losses and no draws, 6 KOs for Akhmad, Akhmadaliev. I'm going to get Just it. Just call him Hatman. Akma. Okay, okay, we'll call him Akma. Akma is short, sure, innit? Right. Akma exactly. And uh, so again, this was for the. This was like a unification title fight. Uh, a Roman, I believe, he had both belts, both the WBA yeah. and then IBF, right? That's right. And this super was um, exactly for the super bantam for both belts. And um, you know, as we've said. These are guys who we, we haven't seen loads of their fights before. No. I've seen um, Roman when he, he came over and he beat uh, Gavin McDonald. Yeah. They're of the two McDonald's, Jamie and Gavin, trained by um, uh, they're trained by Bridget by Dave Coldwell actually, and I've seen him in that fight and maybe one other. And uh, that's all I remember. And Did this guy have any um, amateur background, anything like that? Yeah, they were both um, decent amateurs. Um, okay. For Akhmadaliev, he had um, 50 amateur bouts and then um, he also had uh, five in the WSB, which is, as we know, that's, that's uh, uh, tournaments where you get teams from different countries okay. and they'll come over and, and basically it's like a team sport. Okay. And um, they, they fight with no vest. No head guards. No, like, pretty much that. Like yeah, it, it boxer, essentially it? is pro boxing yeah, just pro without boxing. a you know with an amateur license. But the the style of it, the pace of it, the three minute rounds, you know, you're doing like five threes, I think. So you know, he had about five of them. He, I think, one three lost two, um, fifty other amateur bouts. Um, I believe he fought in the. Um, in the Rio Olympics in 2016, oh, okay. you know, when I was looking through what this guy's it? record, he, what? I don't think he medaled though. He didn't medal. I, I don't think so. No, he, he. I was looking in the box rec the other day, and uh, his name wasn't among those that medals. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, okay. He had like three bouts in it. He lost the third one, so I don't think he got to the medal. It's stage. a bit different in the Olympics, isn't it? I guess. It's yeah, a, it's tough. But point. Everything's got that point in it. So. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're now. Doing the free freeze, so you can take your time a bit more. But you get more not 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 down as yeah. much out as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And um, you know, as we know, in this fight, uh, Roman, you know, Daniel Roman, is a proven force, proven world level guy going into this fight. He did have a few losses, so he wasn't an unblemished guy going in, you know. But he was, I think, um, for my money, he was pretty much. The favorite going into this um, could be wrong about that, but I think you know he, he was kind of the um, favorite, the one that I'd see as the, the experienced guy and you know coming More in. Perfect. Yeah, and the the, the other gent, Akhmadaliev, um, you know he's a seven bout novice guy. He's you know I I suppose the team had a lot of confidence in him. Yeah, you know Akhmadaliev's team they they obviously used best must have believed in him because I mean. Uh, this type of thing I haven't really seen jumping this much into the deep end since uh, Vasily Lomachenko, who wanted a world title fight in his first fight, but Bob Arum couldn't deliver that. And um, this guy seems to be, 
he's not as he doesn't have the great record that um, Lomachenko has, but the the team is also that confident in him. Okay. You know, because to throw a guy in, in uh, yeah, with, like with, a, in his you know, this is his eighth yeah, fight. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's eight five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really trust in his ability. Yeah, absolutely. Get his job done. Because this guy is a proven guy, Roman. Yeah, good fighter. And um, you know, Ahmed Daliev, you know, he was he was really thrown in at the deep end here. Yeah. You know, this was his eighth fight. Um, no, no real pro experience. Yeah. Um, obviously, no twelve rounders under his belt. He's only the eighth bout. So he was really putting the deep end here but as we said this is evidence that his team and himself they really believe in him this was some fast tracking on a different level i mean there's other fighters who've been fast tracked you know joshua's kind of been fast tracked yeah but you know he had world title fighting about what 17 or so fights yeah. this is number eight number eight yeah. so these yeah. guys yeah. really Very really believe in him yeah. real fast track and you know, some say so you can't a, fast track. But it's a huge gamble, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. a big gamble because you're going gamble, in there yeah. with, you know, it shows you that they're obviously, the team obviously were um, confident in their guy. And number two, I think it shows you that they weren't too worried about this mystical O. Yeah. You know, yeah. the Mayweather effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've yeah, got yeah, to give oh, that oh, yeah. They're just like, yeah. no, just give us a fight. And, um, you know, what I noticed in this fight was that from the opening bell, from round one, ding ding, the bell goes. Akhmedali have just stuck it on Roman, you know, literally from the from the very beginning, the opening bell, stuck it on him, you know, southport, nice southport stance, southport jab, but he wasn't like a, he didn't box like a overly defensive southport. He boxed on the attack, on the front foot, and he just stuck it on him. And um, it was one of those where you could see, wow, this guy, he wants to be the boss. Mm -hmm. You could see one guy's in charge, and that yeah, he, he, he was, was that guy, and he well, really he was coming to take over, really. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, you know, all that belief we're talking about yeah. before, and the team had in him, he demonstrated, he demonstrated that from yeah. round one. He just came after him, and he kept same energy all the way through. Oh then. yeah, 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 yeah. And um, it was it was a very good display by him entertaining fight you had some competitive rounds in there don't yeah. get me wrong the fight was competitive it was close in a certain way but it's one of those fights that when you watch it you can see that there's one guy that's always oh, in charge yeah yeah and and that's what this guy was like yeah. Medalia, he was the guy that was always in control and it seemed that you know to kind of sum up the fight it was a case of one guy was sort of in control, set the pace from round one, kept that same energy, kept that same pace, mm -hmm. and the other guy in Roman, who was the champion, you know, he was struggling to keep up with this young guy. Yeah. You know, oh, right. it, yeah. was, it was one of those fights. Again, like the fitness level was completely different as well, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 With the energy, you can tell. the footwork, and the movement. Yeah. You know, that guy's young, he's hungry, I mean, especially when he's. Well, he had seven fight, right? Yeah, and, and you know, won a world title already. Yeah, with some of the seven fight, so that's a massive experience in the, in the pro game. So yeah, I mean, he's a warrior, man. Yeah, he's definitely. So you think he's gonna be a problem in a in a division then? You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, with anyone that's um, good enough to challenge him. Yeah, I think there's there's um, you know, it's a division I keep on one eye on sometimes, but he's. I think he's definitely going to be a problem now. Now he's got some standing now, mm. IBF and WBA unified champion. So, you know, he's going to be a guy to watch, and he's going to be a guy from based on what I've seen here, who's willing to fight everybody. Mm. I think he's one of them guys that not he, he looks, he's not no, going to be no, no, no. anyone. Yeah, he seems no. like an old-fashioned guy. Yeah. I just want fights. I just want to, I fight. want to fight. That's it. <laughs> That's what it's gonna be. So this guy, this Agmedalia, believe me, he's he's one to watch. You know, very very deserving winner. And I mean, as as we say, considering, remember, not done twelve rounds before. I don't even know if he done ten rounds before. I'm not sure. Because this is only in training. Yeah, in training. Yeah. In fight, in yeah. Fight, yeah. And it's a big thing when you just come and you just do twelve rounds with ease. So this guy is. I think he's going to be a threat. 
Oh, he's okay. gonna be a threat. He's very active. I think he has, does he have enough power to kind of like move that, uh, move up in weight and challenge people? Well, heavier, I think like um, pounds. he he might be able to. He's still quite. I think he's, he's this quite young as well, pretty so young guy and stuff. So developing the game. Yeah, he's still up. developing, and yeah. I, I think he yeah he's a guy that he'd, he'd be enthusiastic about doing it. Put it that way. I mean. Yeah, whether he could move up a few divisions, possibly because some of those divisions there's not much poundage between it. Okay. So, so some of these divisions, like um, I don't know, I think his division is super bantam and um, and lightweight, for instance. There's some of them. It's only about five pounds in it. So, okay. in a technically, yeah, I think I think he may, depending on what fights he can get now, because he's got the marbles now. He's got the two titles. So, if you know, if there's opportunities up, I'm, I'm pretty sure this guy, he, he's not well, shy. He, he might try to unify as well, isn't it, before I get Yeah, him. yeah, he's got, yeah. what you got, he's got WBA, yeah. uh, yeah. there's a few others yeah. floating out there, yeah, yeah, be, WBC, yeah. uh, what is it, WBO as well. I'm, I suppose it's, uh, if he's only a big belt, or is it belt that some people this, this one, obviously, there was a champion, the other ones, um, it's something I'd have to check. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not sure the other champions are at this at this moment. Um, but again, I'm sure this is definitely a guy who he'd want to unify first, and then um, that's what I would. If I'm in his corner or advising him or anything, I'd say, yeah, there's no, look, you ain't even had ten fights yet. Yeah, but yeah. He, if he could unify in his following fights or. Just have a homecoming fight in his own country, or you know, something to attract more fans and stuff. And yeah, he'll he's a guy that he will be a problem. And um, yeah, he, he'll he's a guy that you never know. Could he could be a future star? You know, he's done very well thus so far. far. Yeah. So um, he's a guy to watch. Okay. Definitely watch for this guy. Even the highs on it then. Absolutely. Yeah. Like yeah. That. He'll be an issue. So. Anyway, until the next vlog, MKO Pugilism, signing out. See you on the next.